everybody, and welcome to God Talk on KITV. I'm John Christopher Sutton. And I'm Carol Ann. And today on the program, we're going to be talking about being one with God. Amen. And Carol, we've walked with God now for quite a number of years, yes. and we know what it's yes. about being one with God. Yes. Being mirror images of God. To think like He thinks, to mm -hmm. do like He does. Mm -hmm. and, and when we search the scripture, we're going to find how to be like one with God. Amen. Well, that's what we're going to do next is search the scriptures because we go to the book of Proverbs right now. Let's go to chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 of Proverbs. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly before him. Amen. Well, we've got to listen to the voice of God. We've That's got right. to listen to his instruction. At the same time, we have to gain godly wisdom and knowledge in regarding God's ways, the way he thinks, the way he speaks, the way he does things. I like this first part. My son, if, there's a big if here. Mm -hmm. If you receive my words. Well, I choose to receive his words for every day, living, and life. Amen. And if you treasure my commands within you, I treasure them. I, I love them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want my own way. I want his way. Amen. So that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. So if we don't understand... All we have to do is go to God and ask him. There's so many ways to research the Bible, what it means, the footnotes and, and uh, the, the commentaries, that it's easy to find out anything today. If you seek her as silver mm -hmm. and gold, like it's like a treasure, and search for her as hidden treasure. That's Amen. what God's word is. I remember, Chris, loving the word so much when I first found the Lord mm -hmm. that I just couldn't get enough of it. I just ran around, did my housework, did everything I needed to do, get it out of the way and get in a chair with that book. And mm -hmm. I was there for about three hours. I, mm -hmm. I thought God wrote it just for me, you know. Mm -hmm. That's how much it meant to me. It was so alive. Amen. Amen. Well, God's Word is alive. We've got to get it soaked into our mind and our That's hearts. Right. Yes. We've got to learn God's ways by yes. reading the Word. We've got to start walking in those ways, gaining the benefits that God has for us yes. in regards to walking with Him and, and the gifts that He gives us on a daily basis. So we gain knowledge, we gain the wisdom, we find out who God is and what God wants from us and expects from us, and the key is knowing Him intimately and following His direction. Amen. See, once we know who God is and what he wants from us, we can ascertain what we have to do to line up with God's expectations of us. Yes. We who are born again must strive to find out as much as we can about God, his ways, his words, his laws, and his plan for our lives. It, well, I can tell you what he wants. Mm -hmm. He wants everything, Chris. Sure he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> he wants our total allegiance. Amen. He wants us to love him with all of our heart. He Amen. isn't going to accept anything less mm -hmm. than the best. Yeah. And when we gain such insight into God and what his plan is for our lives, then we can act on the goal of pleasing him. Yes. But to please him, we've got to find out what pleases him. That's right. And That's he right. wants us to follow his ways and his words and his laws and gain godly knowledge and wisdom, be able to walk with him in power. And that's what it's all about, walking with God in power. You see, God loves us with a Amen. love that is so strong that we couldn't even comprehend. 
the yes. love of God. It is so deep, so wide, so high that you mm -hmm. can't even grasp it. No. How deep it is. To actually go and die for us as sinners. Not as people who loved God, but as sinners, he mm -hmm. died for us. Amen. Amen. Well, it takes a supernatural mind, a mind of the Spirit of God, to comprehend the power of God's love for us. And it takes a supernatural mind set to fully understand and love God the way that we should be as born-again believers in Christ Jesus. We should know how to love God. And that's one of the things we learn as we study his word, as we find out what kind of a God we love, what yes. kind of a God we serve, yes. and what he expects from us. Yes. Once we understand that, knowing him and wanting his knowledge and his ways to be a part of our lives in a big way, we can comprehend how to walk with him in the spirit realm. And that's as born-again believers in Christ Jesus. That's, that's what we're to do. Walk with him daily. Amen. In spirit and in truth and yes. in power. Yes. Yes. Well, Carol, time for another Bible reading. Let's go to Proverbs once again, chapter 1 this time in verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, mm. but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. Did you ever try to tell a friend what they should and should not do? Mm -hmm. And if they're not born again, they're not likely to receive it. Amen. They want to do their own thing. They want to be the boss of their own life. Well, I'm glad I'm not the boss of my life anymore because it wasn't that great. Now right. God's in charge, and I know that no matter what happens, God always turns an evil thing into a good thing. I love that verse. Mm -hmm. That everything works together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. In other words, we cannot fail. Amen. Really, we cannot fail. Amen. Well, loving God and communicating with Him is a big part of a personal relationship with God, and that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about a personal relationship with God, not a religion. And it's the beginning of wisdom, having a personal relationship with God, because only those who have a hunger and a want for such a relationship can bask in God's presence. Amen. Yes. We need to bask in His presence. We need yes. to have Him in our lives daily. Well, Chris, we can't just come to him when a disaster strikes. And that's what a lot of people do. That's the only time they seek God mm -hmm. is when there's a, a problem that they can't fix. That's right. And uh, But I'm reminded today as I read the word of God to seek him in the good times. Mm -hmm. And you know, Chris, the thing that gets me is a lot of people, you know, they think they want God, but they only want God when there is a catastrophe when there's mm -hmm. something going wrong in their life, that's when they call out to God. And then they think, oh, well, he didn't even answer. But we are to walk with God daily. I'm reminded even this morning to honor him, to search for him, to read his word in the good times. Because if you want him to be there in the difficult times, you want to make sure that you're with him in the good times. Because if we had a friend that only, lo only really loved us and wanted us when we needed them, but, mm -hmm. but when everything was going smooth, we never called them. We never spent time with them. That kind of says what we really think. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know? Amen. We have That's to be right. there for God if we want God to be there for us. We have to have a hunger yes. for God. Now, those who don't have a hunger for knowledge or for godly insight or God himself will not get the revelation of God's love for his people and will not test the, uh, t taste the sweetness of of his love. Those people are considered to be fools in the eyes of yes, God. Yes, yes. So you've really got to be hungry for God. You've got to be hungry for his presence, his knowledge, his word, his laws. And you've got to start walking and speaking in them in order to see the benefits of walking with God. See the blessings that follow you as you walk with God in power. Go back to the Bible again, Carol, this time in the book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Well, you know, I don't fear the Lord in a wrong way now. Mm -hmm. But before I knew him, mm -hmm. I feared him all the time because I knew that if I died, 
I'd go straight to hell. Mm -hmm. I just knew that. I was just brought up with all this guilt and uh, everything wrong. And no matter how hard I tried to be a good person, and I probably was a good person by this world's standards, but it right. never seemed to measure up. Right. Well, you know, having a fear of God is a good thing. And of course, fear meaning not to be scared of God, but a reverence, a love yes. for God, not wanting to disappoint him, wanting to follow his ways continually, walk with him continually on a daily basis, and putting him in the number one position in Always. your life all Always. the time. That's right. So we walk in God's ways, we follow God's commands, and we worship God. And you can never worship God enough. I mean, there's always time to worship God in your day. And, uh, you know, God loves a cheer cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful worshiper. Mm -hmm. And he basks in our worship. So when we worship him, uh, he just loves that. And then he blesses us. He blesses us as we worship him. It's, yes. it's amazing. And, and, and he requires this because this is our gift to him, mm -hmm. to worship him. We right. don't have to have an instrument. We can mm -hmm. just be singing a song yeah. and make it up as you go. You don't have to be talented because he's looking at the heart and not the gifts you have or have not been given. Mm -hmm. And uh, But his what he gives us is his word. Like a lot of times I read the word and I think, what good did this do God? It's done me a lot of good. It's like... A map it's like the hidden treasure and uh, but we have to give something back to God and what God wants from us is worship and let's face it Chris when we go to heaven that's what we're going to be spending a lot of time doing right. a lot of people think about going to heaven to have all their wants and needs and everything met they're not thinking it's a place of worship mm -hmm. if they knew all that they probably wouldn't want to go there <laughs> <laughs> Well, Unless they knew God, of course. Yeah, of course, yes. Well, knowing God is the key factor in all of this. You can obtain all what we're talking about, but you need uh, key factors in, in gaining any of this. Is First of all, the want to have it, the knowledge, gaining the knowledge, God's word, amen, God's wisdom, gaining all of that, uh, believing it, walking in it, and speaking it out in faith, and then watching the miracle power of the Holy Spirit work in your life. It takes the fear of the Lord, uh, and the fear of the Lord is wisdom, and it takes shunning all evil, shun shunning the fleshly desires that you had before you knew God, you know, and you walked the earth. We have to shun as much as possible the flesh in order to connect to the Spirit. It talks about that in Job. Let's go there, Carol. Job chapter 28 and verse 28. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Mm. Amen. So, you know, God views people who despise wisdom and good counsel as fools. We yes. don't want to look uh, as a fool to God. We want him to reverence us as a child of God he, we want him to love us as one of his own, which he does, if we follow his commands, if we walk in his ways, speak his word. You can liken it onto a, a couple that has, a, has children. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want the love from those children. They want those children to honor them, and, uh, but they have to discipline that child. They can't just let that child do whatever they want. And it works mm. so much the same with God. God is there for us to help us, bless us, forgive us, all kinds of things to show us mercy. But he doesn't want us to step out of line. He wants to keep us in that place of always gaining ground with him, being righteous, being holy, because without holiness, you will not see God. Amen. Well, to go a little deeper in this, we go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. So we don't want to be looked on as a fool to God. We want to, him to see us as one of his children and love us and be proud of us as we walk with him in his ways, do, speaking his words and manifesting miracles with his power that's in us. Holy Spirit power given to us by God 
if we walk in his ways and if we are born again in his presence. It, it makes me think back, Chris, many years ago in my vehicle, I was hit by a train. I'm mm. talking like a train with like 30 cars behind it. And uh, I remember safely getting out of that vehicle as the train kept going by, but the, the vehicle was totally damaged, but thank goodness I, I was able to get out. And uh, it, I tried for a whole week to be so good because I knew that I was, could have been taken right then and there. But God had a purpose for me. Mm. And uh, it makes me think of how God can change a life. I was a fool back then, but now I know him. And he is able to take all that condemnation, all that guilt, all the suffering, all the heartaches, and make them well again, make them right in our hearts so that we're not fearing the past. I often think about people that love to drink and, and maybe do other things, and I think like, they look like they're having such a good time. But why are they doing that? Mm -hmm. They're doing that because they have anxious thoughts, because they don't know how to control their life. They need something to lift them up because they don't have God to lift them up. And, and so they turn to other things. But God really is the only answer. Knowing that you are right with God and no matter what happens, you're okay with God and you know where you're going. And that to me is such a burden lifter right there. Amen, amen. And love is the key. We've got to walk in God's love. Yes. A love for God and each other and anyone. And that's really the understanding God and his love for us and following the commands of God and, and his laws and his word. That's the beginning of all wisdom. Yes. We can take a deeper look at that by going to the book of Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 37. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Mm. Now, how many people do you know that can do that? Yeah, well, I know a few at church, but... <laughs> I know a few, and I, I do believe that I love them with all my heart, soul, mm -hmm. mind, and strength, which is the first commandment. Amen. And the second one being to love your neighbor as yourself. That's not mm -hmm. always easily done, mm -hmm. but we're working toward it. Right. And, and we're placed here as, once we know God, to be a light unto others. Because we're like the apostles of today, Chris. Mm -hmm. We're... We're the Peter and the Paul and the, and the Simon yes. and all that for today to tell other people the way. And God lives within us mm -hmm. and gives us the power and the strength to share what we know about God. That's why we're doing this video mm -hmm. is to share with other people the goodness of God. Amen. And the fact that Jesus gave to the original disciples the knowledge and power of God and the Spirit and the miracle power to walk and create miracles, healing people yes. and spreading the gospel news and showing miracles to people. Yes. And he does that for us today. He gives us the power of the Holy Spirit so we can walk in that miracle creating power too. We need that miracle power to be able to spread the gospel news of Jesus Christ. And you know, we're in the end times now, the last days. That's Time right. is running short. So whatever our commission is, whatever God has commissioned you to do for the kingdom of God, right? You got to do it now. Now's the time. Don't put it off any longer. Many of you have gifts and you know you've got them, but you've been putting them off because you're enjoying, you know, walking in the flesh still, right? I have a friend who is knowledgeable in God's ways, but he decides, he he makes the decision to continue to walk in the flesh because he's enjoying that right now, but time is short. He yeah. knows the way, but he's not walking in the way, and he's very, very much aware of it. Exactly. Which I think is a very dangerous place to be. How can God have mercy in that case? That's right. His time is running out, just like ours is. That's why it's vitally important to... If you know you have the gift and you know you have the commission of God to do the work, to start doing it. Yes. Equip yourself with the knowledge of the word. Equip yourself with the power of the Holy Spirit and pray to find out the direction God wants you to go in and start walking in it today. 
Time is short, so it's best be done now. We can take a closer and deeper look at that in the book of Revelation. Let's go there now, chapter 14 and verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. I have to almost laugh at people that don't believe there's a God. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you just have to look around and see who could have done all this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so incredible. And, and why? Why are we here? We're here because God is building a kingdom that is going to last forever. Amen. And he's looking for those who will love him, those who will honor him, walk with him, know him, because he is building a family. The Christians that we know at church, we might not even know their name, mm -hmm. but they're the people we're going to spend eternity with. It Amen. might not be our own family, our physical own family. I hope it, that's not true, but... Um, but that they will come to know the Lord as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there are many people out there today that are seeking knowledge, and knowledge is good, but wisdom is better. The wisdom of God and the right use of that knowledge and wisdom. Because without the wisdom, you can cause a person to be puffed up or filled up with pride, mm -hmm. and uh, that will ultimately ruin his or her life with that yes. pride. See, but a wise person will always be knowledgeable, but not at all knowledgeable people are wise. So you've got to have the wisdom. In other words, if you know you have strength, just because you know you have the strength, you're not going to go out and beat people up because you know you have that strength. That's having wisdom and being wise with that wisdom, knowing that you have a gift, but using it in the right way. Right? So you're going to use that strength to help people. You're going to use that power you have of God to build people up, to help them on their way. And if they're falling, help them get back on track and move in the right direction. Amen. God's Word tells us to cry out for wisdom and to seek it. Yes. And it's his, God's wisdom is greater than silver and gold. And I don't, I don't think he'd ever deny you if you ask for that. Mm -hmm. No, you, know? you won't. Um, I ask for wisdom in every decision that I make. I, I don't want to be left on my own. I pray over everything. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I forget, but uh, I, I tend to pray over all the decisions that I make because I want to make the right ones. Amen. And uh, I just want to do it God's way because I know it's the best way. Amen. Amen. Yes. So we've got to seek knowledge. We've got to seek wisdom, the wisdom to how to operate in the knowledge, how to operate in Holy Spirit power, gaining knowledge in the ways and the words of God. That's a good place to start when seeking God's face. And that's what we're to do. We're to seek God's face on a daily basis. Knowing him and loving him is the key to walking with him in power. Yes. Holy Spirit. It's giving our heart power. to Him. I don't think we could do any of these things without giving our heart to the Lord. Because right. then He gives us the power to do all these things. I tried to do all these things before I knew Him. I didn't even know what knowing Him was about. I didn't know that we could actually really know God and have Him by the power of the Holy Spirit live within us. I didn't even, I was never mm -hmm. taught that. I didn't mm -hmm. know that. But then one day it happened to me and I knew something took place that was so beyond what we could ask or think here on earth. And I had to seek out Christians to find the answer to what had happened to me. Why has my life changed? What has happened here? What was this glorious, wonderful presence that came upon me? I had to seek that out because even though going to church most of my life, I did not know what had happened to me, which right. is really kind of strange, isn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the key here is seeking God's face, gaining the knowledge of the word, gaining the wisdom of God, because the more knowledge, the more wisdom you gain, the more power you're going to possess. Your knowledge and your faith is directly connected to your power source. So the level of your faith that you have is key to the level of power that you're going to be operating in in the spirit realm when you're walking with God. 
faith, knowledge, love, they're all needed to be working parts of the body of Christ. One part can't work without the other. You need right. all the parts to walk fully in Christ Jesus. The more wisdom you gain, the more power you're going to possess, and you, with your faith power, you're going to bring an abundance into the body of Christ yes. and an abundance for yourself and for others around you. The blessing of Abraham is going to be following you yes. wherever you go when you gain I, I believe that knowledge. about the blessing, Chris. Mm -hmm. I, I love those scriptures that say there is two of them. Mm -hmm. I can think of one, and that is Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. Wherever mm -hmm. you put your hand, you will prosper. Yeah, but yeah. it's one of those conditional ones. Mm -hmm. That's if you love him with all your heart. Right. And, and if you do it his way and, and honor him in everything you do and put him first and love your neighbor as yourself, it's very conditional. But when you exalt God and when you love God like that, he will deny you no good thing. He Amen. says, ask. He says, if my word abides in you and, and you abide in me, ask what you will and shall be done for you. And mm. I believe that. I stand on that. And I want those great blessings that man cannot give you. It comes from God. And, uh, Amen. Yeah. So the key factors here in finding God, walking in his presence, is walking in God's love. God's Word, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, right? Finding out who God is and who you are in Christ Jesus. What are the gifts God has given you? There are many gifts that we have as born-again believers. You've got to find out what your gifts are and then start walking in them for the kingdom of God. And then sometimes God gives us gifts that we've never had before. And mm -hmm. it's a surprise to us, but it's what he's called us to do. Right. I bet you didn't think when you first found the Lord that you'd be doing this. Right, That exactly. you'd be writing sermons. Mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't have thought that way. But God no. gave you that gift to do that. He did. And it's amazing because, you know, he says that uh, he will create in your weakness... That'll become your strength. And that's yeah. exactly what God did with me. You know, that was a weak area for me when I was yes. younger. Yes. And God gave me the strength and the knowledge to be able to do it. And the goal? To preach the gospel message to a lost and dying world. And that's why we're here today. We want to share with you the good news of Christ. And be able to give you that good news so you can walk in it daily and be a part of it. Of God and family.